Hey guys, this is just a quick update into what I've been up to in the Mod Cave lately with my day job and other projects. I've really been too busy to be spending a lot of time in here, let alone turning those adventures into videos, which is very time consuming. But in the small amount of time I've had in the workshop, I've put that to good use. I've actually reorganized a lot of my electronics parts and done some other stuff. I've incorporated an audio compressor into my rig here, and that's to sort of take the place of the inbuilt audio compressor in my camera, which is really pretty clunky, especially when I'm recording from two separate sources. Over the last few days, I've been working on this little project here. It came about because well, quite a few years ago, I was in Adelaide and through a mutual friend, I got to hang out with a very highly respected classical guitar luthier called Jim Redgate. And one of the things he told me, which really impressed me actually, was that when he decided to get serious about guitar building, he made a series of instruments only with hand tools, using, using no power tools at all. And I just thought it'd be a really good challenge to try that myself at some stage. I don't know if I'd make a classical guitar, maybe a, a, a bass guitar or a Strat or something like that. But one thing that I have thought would be really difficult would be creating the truss rod channel in the neck blank. So that's really where this idea comes from. It's essentially a, a grooving plane or a, or a plow plane. Uh, the blade is actually from one of my chisels. It's a you can probably see where that is now. It's a 1 8 chisel. This is actually a really nice old chisel. I think it belonged to my grandfather. It's a Sorby. It's a British made uh, chisel and the blade is very high quality steel. It really holds an edge beautifully. For that reason, I'm actually going to leave the spike on because I'd like to keep using it as a chisel. I actually use this when I'm clearing out glue and, and other debris from the slot in the fretboard that takes the string nut. On any other type of plane design, that'd be kind of crazy because you'd be worried about pushing that through the palm of your hand. But this plane is actually designed to be pushed through and held in your fingers like that. So there's actually a, a kind of a groove at the back for your thumbs and then there's a dimple on each side for your fingers as well. So you push it through there. So really this you know, doesn't really pose any threat. The blade's held in place with two of these thumb wheels which I just made out of well, they're little guitar knobs from my junk box. These ones are actually, you can probably see that, they're EMGs, EMG guitar knobs. It's actually the top half of a stacked pot set. Uh, these are nice because they've got a brass insert in them. So I've actually glued a length of uh, quarter 20 rod. This is just a bolt that I cut up and that's just glued in with a bit of uh, black super glue. Then I've uh, tapped these holes with my quarter 20 tap obviously, then I've soaked that thread with some fine super glue, let it cure naturally without accelerator so it soaks into the timber and then you run the tap through it again and those threads are actually really really hard and I can actually, even just with my fingertips, I can actually get quite a bit of torque on those. The um, I also chose these knobs because they've got quite strong vertical knurling on them and again you can really torque those up. Uh, the idea of having two is just partly just because I want to hold this really firmly in place but uh, and also it, it is a slightly tapered chisel so it would have the tendency to pop out if it wasn't held in place but the main reason is so well in practice you will do a pass and then you need to sort of deepen the trench or deepen the, the, the blade by maybe half a millimeter or so and with two what it means is that you can slacken one of these off but then return it to finger tight that way when you slacken the second one off, the blade's not going to move, it's going to stay there. And then you can return that guy to just about finger tight. Then uh, tap, 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 tap. And then tighten these down firmly again. Then you're good to go for another pass. There's uh, a nice little curly wood shaving for you. And um, yeah, it works really well and I can see myself actually creating uh, a truss rod slot by hand, <laughs> finally seeing a way of doing that with this uh, cute little plane. It was originally, um, I just eyeballed this, I didn't really measure anything uh, and it was originally meant to be just a quick sort of mock-up. I fully expected to have to remake it with a few tweaks and adjustments but I kind of fluked it and it works perfectly as is so that's why it's kind of made out of just rough bits of thick ash. So I thought I'd make it a bit nicer and I fine sanded it and put some wax oil on it. But um, yeah, it works really well. 
And I look forward to one day having a go at making a guitar entirely by hand. In the meantime though, I do have a couple of videos in the pipeline, so keep an eye out for those. And uh, until I see you then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.